So yeah, since we've been looking into operations on vectors uh, and we're still in addition, we've seen the three laws which are relevant for you know addition and we've seen how all three you know somehow relate to each other and uh, one can be used to prove the other. Now we will actually look into some properties of addition. After this, we will see the formula that I was talking about. Uh, what is the basically we saw parallelogram law of vectors where you represent two vectors at sides of a parallelogram and the diagonal actually gives you the length of the resultant magnitude, right? We will see how to actually, you know, the, the formula that I was talking about as to how to calculate the length of that diagonal, right? So we will look into all that. First, let's finish some properties on addition. So the first property is just like your normal algebraic addition, your vectorial addition is also commutative. Right, so 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Just the way that is valid, similarly here also this vectorial addition is also commutative. Now this should be slightly intuitive to prove this. You know, why is it true? Let's use parallelogram law vectors for that, we already know. So you have two vectors A bar and B bar. Right, somewhat like this. Now, if you want A bar plus B bar, what do you do? You construct a parallelogram, right? You construct a parallelogram with A and B as its edges and this diagonal of the parallelogram which goes, which starts from the uh, point of, you know, contact of these two vectors and goes uh, to the opposite end. This length is basically the length of your resultant magnitude. So this is the resultant vector. This is your R bar, right? And this is your R bar. This is the resultant vector. What is B bar plus A bar? You will do the same thing. You will you will again take these two as the edges, construct a parallelogram and take the diagonal as the resultant, right? Now whether you are A bar, whether you take A bar first or B bar first, that doesn't matter, right? Because ultimately you will be doing the same thing. You will be constructing the parallelogram and using the diagonal for the resultant. That is the reason why addition of these two vectors is commutative, right? Let's look at uh, the next property. So the next property says that it is associative. So just like your normal addition of two vectors, a bar plus b, uh, just like your normal algebraic addition, vectorial addition is also associative. So I'm just writing it that's an equal to here. This is equal to a bar plus b bar plus c bar. Right. So it is associative. Now, what is this giving rise to? Uh, and you know, how can you intuitively prove this? So, I'll take three vectors for that. Once again, I'll use parallelogram law vectors to somehow intuitively understand this. Right. So, just make some space here. So, what you do is you take this vector A bar as, you know, one vector and then from the same tail, you take a B bar. Right. And maybe from the same place you take a c bar so you, here are your three vectors a bar b bar c bar and you want to see if they are associative or not so what you do is you first construct so here here what's happening here is uh, here what's happening is a bar and b bar are taken in a bracket that means you find the resultant of a bar and b bar first so for that you'll construct a parallelogram take this diagonal this diagonal is the resultant of uh, basically it's your a bar and b bar a bar plus b bar right now this a bar plus b bar this a bar plus b bar is added to c bar so a bar plus b bar is one vector c bar is another vector right c bar along this on this green thing is another vector so to calculate the resultant of these two you will construct another parallelogram right you will construct another parallelogram with these two as the edges the pink and the c bar green one as the edges and now this is your final resultant right this is your a bar plus b bar plus c bar i hope you've been following now uh, similarly i will put a similar setup here below wherein your a bar looks the same your b bar looks the same and c bar also looks the same as to what it is above right so similar setup now what i'll do is i'll use this side so this is your a bar this is your uh, a bar plus b bar uh, plus c bar so but here what you're doing is you're taking b bar and c bar first 
So you will first find the resultant of B bar and C bar. So for that, I'll take, I'll construct a parallelogram using B and C as the edges, right? So that's something like this. Uh, in fact, it's a little more tilted. So this is not very right. So let me just reconstruct it properly. So you will take a parallel side with C and a parallel side with B, right? So this is your new resultant. This is your B bar plus C bar, right? This pink line, this pink line is your B bar plus C bar. In fact, uh, I'll have to write it here because I need that space. So this is your B bar plus C bar. Now what I'll do is, this B bar and C bar is added to A bar, right? So B bar and C bar is added to A bar. So I will take two vectors. First is your A bar, like this green one that goes straight and the pink one and construct a parallelogram using these two, right? So here and this one. Now you take the resultant of this, these two. So basically this parallelogram, this one, it's diagonal right so the diagonal that goes here in fact let me use a different color so that you're able to see it better so this diagonal that you see here this is a resultant now this and this they look the same right they're pointing in the same direction and because i've not drawn it with proper scale so i've not drawn it with proper scale that is the reason why their magnitudes are looking different but they are the same they are the same vectors that is what i wanted you to understand so like if you take if you draw it with proper scaling then you will actually see that okay both these two vectors will be the same so this was one way you could prove that okay addition of vectors is associative let's move on to the next property so the next property is slightly more simple and that is your additive identity so if you that means if you add a zero vector to a vector it will remain the same right this is called additive identity and uh, you've already seen this in your normal algebra as well like if you add a zero to a number it will remain the same number the sum will remain the same number similarly here you're not adding zero you're adding a zero vector i've already shown you what zero vector is it's a vector with zero magnitude and arbitrary direction right if you add such a pointed you know a vector which is localized to a point that's basically a zero vector if you add that to a vector you'll get the same vector back as as your uh, result right so that is your additive, additive identity coming to the next property that is your additive inverse so you can guess what the result will be uh, additive inverse can you tell me what the result will be the result will be zero right and how do you justify that how do you justify that you can justify that using parallelogram law vectors again so you construct a take a vector a bar how will minus a bar look like minus a bar will start from the tail it will be exactly on the opposite side and you know with the same magnitude now the thing here is when you had two vectors the method that you used to you know construct uh, you constructed a parallelogram took the diagonal and you said that okay this was the resultant a bar plus b bar the thing here is the parallelogram can be constructed at all there can be no parallelogram that will be constructed for that either of them have to be slightly lifted right they have to be slightly lifted only then you can take take them as two edges and construct a parallelogram right now what will happen is these two will exactly cancel they will exactly cancel each other so they will cancel each other what do you mean by cancel when you calculate the resultant so it's something like you're adding minus 2 to plus 2 so this is your plus 2 this is your minus 2 you know they'll exactly when you are vectorially adding them they are in opposite directions they have the same magnitude they will cancel out each other why because the parallelogram that i was talking about can't be constructed here so it will be something like a zero vector so even if you try constructing so for example uh, if it was a little above you know maybe something like this so if it was not exactly here then what you would do is you would construct a parallelogram something like this and you would call this as your resultant now what if i bend this even more if i bend this even more closer to the dotted line so this is my vector if i blend it even more closer to the dotted line what will happen is 
my resultant gets even smaller so this is bigger this is smaller and as it keeps coming coming down to this dotted line one day when this and this are the same then this itself is your resultant this point itself is your resultant right so that's what i'm trying to trying to draw your attention to if you look at this resultant this is slightly bigger if you look at this resultant it is slightly smaller why because this arm that you see here is coming closer and closer to the dotted line and when it completely comes on the dotted line then these two will cancel out each other and that means that the resultant is this point itself right and that is what your zero vector is so you can in fact put a bar here right that will be better so this is what your additive inverse is now coming to the next property and this is you know slightly more involving to prove so let me write that and make some space so there is this one property that i'm going to straight right now you won't completely or uh, you just might uh, but there's no guarantee that you will completely understand it but the formula that i will give you after this as far as addition of vectors is concerned after that when you review this fifth point again you should be able to understand it better but right now let me just state it and give you sort of an intuitive explanation as to why this property is true so this property says that if i have two vectors a bar and b bar i add them up vectorially and if i take their magnitude this magnitude will always be less than or equal to the sum of their individual magnitudes this is also called as triangular law uh, or triangular inequality in complex numbers uh, so just stating a statement here so this is your first part of the property the second part is the difference of these two vectors if i take the difference of two vectors now i have exactly not told you how to actually calculate the difference but that also we will see uh, when we calculate the formula so we will use that for, we will get that formula from you know uh, parallelogram law vectors only and there only we will see how to also subtract two vectors because subtracting two vectors is nothing difficult it is just addition of its negative right so if you have a vector you reverse it if you have b bar reverse reverse it take minus b bar and then treat this as a separate vector and carry out your normal addition right carry out your normal vector minus b bar is another vector a bar is a vector just carry out the normal addition so that's what subtraction is right addition of a negative so that is what we will use to see anyways i'm just stating the property right now a bar minus b bar uh, if you take the difference and then take the magnitude of that that will always be greater than or equal to the difference of their individual magnitudes now i would like to focus you have a plus here when you have a plus your inequality on the other side also has a plus and what the, the inequality is less than or equal to so i am highlighting these differences when you have a minus even in the inequality you have a minus but the symbol that you use is greater than or equal to right so uh, let's see how this is true uh, sort of intuitively so what you do is you take a vector a bar and take another vector b bar in the same direction now i'm not giving the exact proof but i'm telling you what this statement means so you can the question is when can i take two vectors a bar and b bar this is the question when can i take two vectors add them and when will this be equal to their individual addition when will this happen remember this happens only when they are in the same direction only when they are in the same direction this equality this equality that you see here this equality is valid only when a and b are in the same direction so what happens like why is it that this is the maximum possible why is it that this is the maximum possible so what happens here is if i have a and b in the same direction i simply just add them up i take the magnitude of a i take the magnitude of b and i just add these two magnitudes to get my long resultant magnitude right that is your resultant vector and this will be true when they are in the same direction but when they are not in the same direction so for example this is your a bar and b is not along a bar but there is some tilt 
there is some tilt then what happens is you construct a parallelogram and take a diagonal right and this is your mod a plus b uh, mod a plus b right now as you can see there is some magnitude which is lost in the addition so what happens here is when they are in the same direction for example your a was 2 b is 3 so when they are in the same direction all of your 2 and of your and your 3 which is your a bar mod a and mod b all of your 2 and 3 will contribute in the sum and it will become 5 right but when they are not in the same direction when they are not in the same direction not all of your 2 so like something some quantity which is less than 2 right and some quantity which is less than 3 these will add up to give your result now i'm not stating why this is true but I'm, i just want you to accept it right now that when they are in the same direction the entire magnitude contributes to, to the sum and when they are not in the same direction then not all of the magnitude contributes so, so this length and this length when you take their relation this this will always be less uh, greater than this right so this this will always be greater than this so that is what your this result is this mod a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b similarly uh, i'm not proving this right now but along a similar argument you know when uh, when is the difference valid when does this happen so the sum happens when they are in the same direction the difference is valid so if i have to you know take the difference of two vectors for example if i have to take the difference now this will be mod a minus mod b when they are in the opposite direction that is that's all i can tell you right now when you have a and b in the opposite direction then you take the difference like their their individual magnitudes can be subtracted from each other but when they are not in the same direction then once again to do subtraction also you need to use parallelogram law of addition which we will anyway see in the next video but for now just remember these two properties uh, De uh, with a sort of an intuition that I've helped you know to put into you so uh, as far as properties are concerned these were the important properties that you needed to know and for now let's just close this and let's look at that important formula of resultant of two vectors